Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will be making this stuffed felt stocking Christmas ornament. It's fun and easy, so let's get started. To make our felt stocking ornament, we will start with the pattern. I'm using a vintage pattern, Vogue Patterns 1542 Santa Pack 4. This is readily available on eBay or Etsy. It's not hard to find. Inside the pattern are the usual um, tissue paper parts. Then there's also two sets of transfers. One is on this white waxy paper and it has yellow ink and I cannot get those to work. And then the other set is on the tissue paper and it has dark ink. This is the stocking pattern, and here are the transfers. I use my regular household iron to transfer these onto sticker paper. So this is an Avery label paper. It's 81, here we go, 8165. And I just put the transfer on and iron it down and then I use the stickers, I cut them out, and I use them to create patterns. I'll show you this first. I know it's hard to see because it, it comes out very pale, but the, um, the transfers are here on the sticker paper. And then I can just place them on the felt and cut them out like this. So I've cut out all of my pieces, there's a toe and a heel and some leaves and trims and a cuff. But I will admit that I was not crazy about the actual shape of the stocking. To my eye, I prefer the stocking to face to the right, the toe to be the right, and this angle was a little too sharp. So I sort of uh, clipped it here and kind of pulled it out like this and and I kind of redrew it while maintaining the size of the toe, the heel, and the cuff so that these pieces will fit. Of course, if you want to do it right out of the package like this, of course, that'll be just fine. So I cut two fuchsia stockings. I've got a white cuff. These are all from wool felt. Here's the toe and these are the stickers. <laughs> I've used these four times. I think they're about ready to hit the trash. There's the heel. Then this little yellow strip goes across the cuff about in the center, then we have nine leaves. Six are the pale green and then three are the dark green. And they will be arranged on this cuff later on. But that's the idea. I think they might go like this actually. Yeah, that's how they go. Um, I'm going to begin by blanket stitching the yellow pieces. I have yellow thread in my machine and I'll use a little smudge of glue stick in the center of these yellow pieces. Just a little smudge. And this doesn't stay purple. It does dry clear-ish. Let's see. So I'm going to do a machine blanket stitch across the top and the bottom of the yellow bar and then a machine blanket stitch around the scalloped edge of the toe and the scalloped edge of the heel. I'm finding that this doesn't quite match exactly you know, I did make some adjustments. 
So I might trim the pink out a little bit so that that goes to the edge. But I'll start by blanket stitching the cuff, just the top and the bottom of the strip. Here's how the cuff looks. That's ready to go. Just a little smudge of glue. You could also pin it. And now the heel and the toe. And this isn't quite, it's not quite right on the toe, so I am gonna trim a little bit of the pink. About like this. And this, that looks good. Just a little wedge. And then I'm going to blanket stitch the scalloped edges. By the way, there is, um, it fits better with this part of it at the top and this part at the bottom. So just try it both ways and you can determine which one fits better. So I will blanket stitch with my machine just around the scalloped edges. I'm gonna leave all of the outside edges to the very end when I'm stitching the front to the back because I want to have a consistent color around the outside, which I've tried it with pink, but I think it looks better with white. When I'm stitching, I keep the bar of the blanket stitch to the outside and then the little legs go inside. Hope that makes sense. Okay, now I'm going to stitch the cuff and I'm gonna add the leaves later, but for now I will blanket stitch the scallops on the cuff. There we go, there's the white. And now I'm gonna add these little leaves. I want you to see how I have these little stickers that I use to, um, to make the patterns. And then when I place them, I want to be sure that I'm not all the way to the edge. I'm going to overlap a little bit. So there's pairs of these light green colored. And right here, I have enough room for my stitches to stitch the front to the back. So I'm going to do these pairs, one, two, three. And then I'm going to actually embroider them down with two strands of green floss. So this looks like the, the placement is correct. I have enough room here. There's a room at the bottom for my holly berries. And um, the right one is overlapped over the left um, when I'm looking at it this way. You don't have to do that. You could, you know, do it a little bit differently. But I'm going to secure these with a little smudge of glue. That looks about right. They don't have to be perfect. And now I have two strands of floss. There's a knot in the end, and I'm just going to do one stitch. So I'll start here, come up a little bit above the point, the bottom point, and then just reinsert right here a little bit below the top. I'm not concerned about my thread showing through because I have so many layers here. So I'm just gonna cut right across. I'll show you on the back. So I'm going to go from the bottom to the top and create that little vein. I'm also using a contrast shade of green. So I'll use dark green for the light green felt leaves, and I'll use light green for the darker felt leaves. 
Once again, I'm just cutting across like that. And then one more set. Don't pull the stitches too tight because you don't want the, um, you know, the shape to distort. Now I'll secure my thread on the back. I'm gonna add a smudge of hot glue right here to secure that thread. Now for the dark leaves, they are placed about like that. So I'll do one, two, three with my glue stick. There's nothing to it. One. They don't have to be perfect. You know, it's way more fun if they're a little wonky. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I will show you the stocking ornament that I made back in the 70s. I have a lighter shade of floss for this darker leaf. There we go. One and two. I'm kind of angling down to go from the bottom to the top. Three. They're not perfectly lined up. I'm not using a ruler. <laughs> there we go. So there are the leaves. Three dark, six lighter. And once again, I'll secure my thread on the back. And then I'll add a little smudge of glue to be sure those threads hold. Now I'm going to use white thread now I'm going to stitch the front to the back, leaving the top open. Also, there are some places where I trim the front, and so I'm gonna make sure that the front and the back match. So I'll go back and trim out a little bit right there, I think. So this is ready for me to stitch. I kind of trued up the edge even though I'm using a fairly narrow blanket stitch, I feel fine that I'm going to be able to go through both layers, or all three or four layers, all the way around. So I'll start here, go all the way around, and stop here. There we go, I've stitched around the edge, and I checked to be sure that I, I caught the edge all the way around, so I am ready to stuff. I'm using Polyfill Ultra Plush. I really like this stuffing, and I'll use a chopstick like this to be sure that I get it all the way down into the toe. I don't have to stuff it all the way to the top because I am going to close this by machine and so if I have too much stuffing up there in the way it's going to be hard. <laughs> that looks good. Nice and plump. Now I'm going to push the stuffing down out of the way so that I have room for my presser foot here. And I'm actually going to place a pin across to sort of, sort of hold that stuffing down. And now I'll go ahead and blanket stitch across the top edge. I stitched across the top and now I'm sort of working that stuffing up into the into the border there. Pattern instructions call for a coiled strip of, um, of felt to create these little berries, just one berry at the bottom of each pair of leaves, but I like to use pom-poms. These are a bright and cheerful red. They are seven millimeter pom-poms, which is about a quarter of an inch. And what I like to do is just Hold three in my hand. I'm going to hold three like this. 
and then <laughs> it's kind of tricky and then just squeeze some glue in the center so that it will secure all three at once. Of course, you could also use white glue for this step. There we go. So three little tiny pom-poms for the berries. And finally, we'll do a hanging loop from red and white Baker's twine through the corner here. And then tie it off with an overhand knot, a little trim, and we are done. I promised I would show you the one that I made back in the 70s. Here it is. Uh, the stocking is red, and um, I don't know, I maybe... The instructions definitely call for a fuchsia color or a bright pink, and um, I made it red, I don't know why. And what I did was right sides together, I stitched it and turned it. So that's also an option. And then all of the pieces are just glued, and then I did a ribbon for the hanger. And of course, I used the uh, shape of the stocking right off the pattern. I did not alter it in any way. Here they are compared. And um, of course, I like to think that my skills have improved a little bit and also that I have access to a higher quality of supplies. The 100% Merino felt is just a joy to work with. Thank you for watching my tutorial. If you're enjoying my videos, please like, share, and subscribe.